Good morning, I'm Matt Nichols at Mr. Maple. Today I want to talk to you about a commonly asked question, and that's pros and cons of grow bags with Japanese maples. Now take a second. Hey, I'm Matt Nichols, and welcome to Mr. Maple. Somebody's playing bagpipes. <laughs> you hear that? Somebody's just playing bagpipes like in the neighborhood. What? Hey y'all, I'm Matt Nichols at Mr. Maple, and today I have a commonly asked question for you. Today we're going to be talking about Japanese maples and grow bags, pros and cons of the damn bagpipes again. <laughs> so the bagpipes have rejoined us here in the neighborhood. We have a, a neighbor learning to play bagpipes apparently while I'm filming this. Only started once I started filming, so me and Brian are kind of laughing but kind of enjoying it too. So if you're hearing bagpipes in the background of this video, you're not going crazy, it's actually there. Hey guys, I'm Matt at Mr. Maple, and today we're going to be talking about Japanese maples and grow bags. So if you will, please like, comment, and share on our videos. That helps a long way. And as always, sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com. We're always adding new and interesting plants. So a commonly asked question for us here at Mr. Maple are about grow bags and Japanese maples. There's some pros and some cons to grow bags. First, I'm going to go over some of the pros and some of the reasons you might want to consider a grow bag as an option for you. Now, Grow bags are excellent for in-ground options. So if you're gonna grow your Japanese maple and you know you're moving soon and you wanna get it in-ground and develop an in-ground root system, which are typically some of the strongest with Japanese maples, a grow bag is a great way to do it. You can put a tree in this pot, essentially, and grow it in the ground. And then you know you're moving long-term, you already have it in the container, it'll be easier to move down the road. You'll be able to take this whole piece and move it without a lot of shock or transpiration to the plant because it's been developed in this small container here. Now. Uh, one thing to be considerate of when you're doing that is a drip irrigation system. If you're growing in a grow bag, I highly recommend a drip irrigation system and accompaniment to a grow bag. Uh, grow bags work differently. They work like the ground, so the watering system can be a little bit different, but they can also prevent roots from going in other areas. So you're containing all the roots to this one space. So root systems typically do the most uh, development when they're drying out completely, and being able to turn on a watering system that's directly right here on the plant is going to give it its best success rate. Now. Another advantage to grow bags are that they're very affordable. So if you're moving and you want to take Japanese maples with you, it may be a much more affordable option than buying large containers for several of your mature Japanese maples. So you may be able to find grow bags at a significantly discounted rate over nursery container pots. Uh, now, that said, there are definitely some disadvantages to growing in grow bags. So I'll go over a few of those and just some factors to keep in mind when growing in a grow bag. Now, if you're doing a, a grow bag with Japanese maples, I highly recommend you using them for their original purpose, which is in-ground growing. So grow bags typically go into the soil. You're going to bury the whole bag in the ground, and it's going to keep this plant essentially, you know, in the ground long term, but able to be removed. So I don't recommend grow bags above ground long term, and you'll certainly find people that can do it in different environments. But we sell Japanese maples to the entire United States, so we see people getting issues in all kinds of different zones. In hotter zones, above ground, you have to factor in that the transpiration rate on your pot is going to be much different than on the grow bag. So the grow bag may dry out in different areas. It may allow certain areas for your root ball to dry out too quickly. Uh, certain areas may be in sun, which will heat up quicker and cause more issues than it might necessarily even in a nursery container. So these are factors to think about. Now, uh, if you're going to grow in a colder zone, there's also some factors to think about because you may need a little more root protection. You know, grow bags are great for colder zones if you want to put the tree in the ground, but you don't want to leave them above ground in the root, in the root maker pot or the, uh, the grow bag like this because it may dry out much quicker and it may lead to more freeze drying and it may lead to more root damage issues in the winter months. I've certainly seen that with people in colder zones growing exclusively in grow bags. So these are some advantages and disadvantages. I definitely would say when you're growing in grow bags, the easiest way to do it is to go completely into the ground. You know, you're, you can put your plant into a grow bag, then plant that at the same level you would hiding the grow bag and let that tree do its thing so that you have the full advantage of being able to take it and remove it later at a later time. So another recommendation I'll give you when growing in grow bags is if you're gonna have them above ground, they definitely need to be in a shaded area. They can certainly dry out at different intervals. Uh, I've seen some people with great success, you know, typically those are in warmer zones and they're maintaining that water very meticulously for the grow bag. So sometimes the water can be a little tricky with a Japanese maple. And one of the issues that grow bags can have is they're not only do these pots transpire quickly, they can also absorb moisture. So if they're in an area that's holding water or ponding, it's gonna to be too much water for your Japanese maple if it's above ground. It's not gonna dry out at its natural rate. 
Uh, you don't want to more their boggy or wet feet anyway in the ground, but certainly uh, when watering, uh, you know, Japanese maples in the grow bag, sometimes we overwater those. And then what's going to happen is uh, you're going to actually have some absorption going on from the side. So you might be getting a little bit of root rot at the bottom of your pots because they're staying a little too damp. Also, another thing to factor in, you have to pack the dirt very tightly, the soil you're putting into your grow bag, because it will be a looser mixture. So factor that in. A couple years ago, we experimented with doing some grow bags for uh, above ground stuff in greenhouses, and we didn't like it because they didn't keep the same rigidity. So the trees would often have kind of a wonkier shape because maybe part of the bag got moved in or something like that while it was growing. So it was a less uniform overall shape for us, but you can get a great shape by simply planting those in the ground. So I hope that gives you some pros and cons to growing Japanese maples in grow bags. Uh, certainly something we've done here at Mr. Maple in the past. Again, my main advice would be a uh, drip irrigation system and actually planting the grow bag for its original intended purpose. You can do it short term, uh, you know, with the grow bag above ground, but the longer you go into the winters and summers, the more variables you're going to encounter, the more wild weather could go either way. And so you're getting higher and higher risk the longer you leave it in a grow bag. Now it certainly can be done, but it's not definitely advisable in some areas. I hope this gave you some more confidence in growing Japanese maples. And just a little bit of advice here for grow bag growing. Uh, if you will, if you're enjoying this channel and you're getting something out of it, definitely like, subscribe, and share it with your garden friends. We greatly appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching. God bless and have a great day.